Welcome to Stuff You Should Know from HowStuffWorks.com. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark, and there's Charles W. Chuck Bryant, and there's Jerry Smoke and Roland over there. She's just a cloud chaser. <laughs> Is that what they call smokers? Dude, I looked up uh, terminology, vape terminology. Cloud chaser, really? Because I, I wanted to punish myself. Uh, and that's apparently, I, I don't know. That's what this website said. That sounds like the kind of thing somebody who wears like a flannel shirt tied around their waist would call somebody who vapes. Yeah. Oh, no. These are vapors who, you know, puff fat clouds. You've seen those people? Yeah. With just ridiculous amounts of smoke or not even smoke, whatever it is. I, uh, whatever it is is the right <laughs> the right thing to say, Chuck, because no one's quite sure. Yeah. So we're talking electronic cigarettes. E-cigarettes, if you go to the FDA website, they're called electronic nicotine delivery uh, systems. They don't. People don't even call them e-cigarettes anymore, do they? Or do they? I, I don't know. I felt so square researching this because it's such an ever-evolving thing. Yeah. You have to be like right in the thick of it to know. I saw e-cigs a lot. Oh, really? Still today. It, well, in the, by the media? Well, yeah. Yeah. I bet. I think they just call it vaping. Right. Okay. So vapes. Vapors. Vapors. <laughs> right. Um, the, the, you see it more and more. Sure. These days. The kids, which is kind of a problem. Yeah. The kids seem to be enjoying this. Although I can't say anything because I was thinking about this. I'm like, gosh, teenagers are trying this. And I was like, I was 14 when I started smoking tobacco. Yeah. Like every day for 20 years. Like probably Marlboro Reds or something. Dumb yes, like indeed. That. Marlboro <laughs> Reds. Although when you're that young and you ride up on your bike to the convenience store to buy cigarettes, yeah. you just kind of – you'll take whatever you can get. Yeah. Um, but it, it, does, it strikes me as absolutely nuts when – now that I don't smoke anymore, the idea of like teenagers smoking, mm-hmm. it's just weird. Yeah. Um, but some people – kind of have this idea that it's wrong-headed to compare e-cigs or vapes who knows what they're called with our cigs with with regular cigs <laughs> yeah or non-vape cigs right um and that you could make a case that it's possible it's fine that teenagers are doing this really some might say or at the very least they might say if you, if I had to choose a teenager smoking a, a an right. e-cigarette or tobacco, I would always choose the e-cigarette. Yeah, and I think that's one of the main points that we're going to hammer home throughout this whole thing is that it is still sort of the wild, wild west. Yeah, and that's one of the big issues is that no one really knows the deal a lot of times with what's in here, how it's reacting in the body. Yeah, what uh, the who, who the manufacturers? I mean, it's all just. We're all just kind of guessing right now. For sure, for a couple of reasons. One, they're so new. But two, here in the United States, it wasn't until 2016 that the FDA gained regulatory control over these things. Yeah. Before it was like they could put anything into the Mm e-juice, who knows what it's actually called, um, that you're smoking, and you would have no idea what's in there. there. There was no regulation whatsoever until 2016. Yeah. So, yeah, it is, like you said, the Wild Wild West still. They're still figuring this out. And depending on what country you're in, um, they're either a great way to, to quit smoking tobacco or to smoke instead of smoking tobacco. Yeah. Or they're just as bad as cigarettes, if not worse in some respects. Yeah, or they're a gateway mm-hmm. to a kid who may not have even started smoking cigarettes. Yeah. But tried this because it tastes like peaches and cream, right? And then they get hooked on the nicotine. I, rem- I remember, you know? I remember when Joe Camel came out in the nineties. Oh yeah, and they were like, uh, "You can't have this cartoon camel hawking cigarettes because you're clearly targeting kids." Yeah. Well, at least he never had peaches and cream flavor. <laughs> Which, by the way, I was looking at um, ingredients in tobacco because now in the United States, mm-hmm. cigarette companies have to list the ingredients on their on their websites at yeah. least. Because that's what all smokers do is okay. go to the website to see what they're smoking. What's in this? <laughs> Let me see. Um, high fructose corn syrup is in cigarettes. That doesn't surprise me. It, it doesn't if you stop and think about it. But if you stop one more time and think about it, you're like, that stuff is everywhere. Yeah. So e-cigs. 
Yeah, they were invented by a pharmacist in China named Han Lick, who I believe his father died of lung cancer from smoking. That's what I saw. And I don't know if that was the impetus to create this or not, but uh, he did patent the device in 2003. And as soon as I read that, I was like, man, I bet this guy is a gazillionaire. You want to hear something very surprising? What? He is not the first person to patent an e-cigarette. Well, and he's all, he also, I mean, I'm not sure how much his net worth is, but he's still currently kind of battling for rights to make oh, money yeah. and stuff. Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West. So back in the 60s, the mid-60s, a man named Herbert A. Gilbert, which is, that's a 1960s inventor's name if I've ever heard one. Yeah. He patented something that is basically an e-cigarette. Mm-hmm. And then apparently even further back than that, in the 1920s, someone patented a vaporizer pen. Not really? necessarily for cigarette But use. they were human spirit vapors. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's my grandmother's soul. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's the deal. We haven't even said what it is yet. Um, I figured everyone knows because it seems to be uh, they're ubiquitous these days. Yeah. But um, an e-cigarette is – it's a it's a battery-powered device. Usually looks – sometimes it can look like a cigarette right. that even lights up on the end, but – I don't see a lot of those anymore. No, it's kind of an early thing. I think so. And um, just to make you feel more like you were smoking. But now they um, just look like little pins with a cartridge, and it converts that liquid nicotine into a vapor that you inhale. So you're not actually burning nicotine. No. There's no smoke, even though it looks like smoke. That's I don't even know what you call it, vapor? It's vapor, for exhalation. sure. Exhalation. Dep- depending on what's in the stuff that you're sm- you're inhaling or vaporizing. Fat clouds. Fat clouds, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's it. You you hit the nail on the head. It, the combustion isn't involved. Right. Those little coils in there that get heated up by the battery yeah. bring the vapor or the liquid up to its boiling point, converting it to vapor, and then that's what you inhale. And since there's no combustion... Uh, you're not getting all the extra stuff that you get when you smoke tobacco, like tar. Well, there is no tobacco in here. There isn't, and that's a really big point, that even in articles about the difference between tobacco and e-cigarettes, they they call this stuff interchangeably, like, yeah. like tobacco. These are not tobacco. Tobacco is a plant that contains nicotine mm-hmm. that we have learned over the centuries to smoke or chew as a delivery system yeah, yeah as a delivery system for that nicotine the problem is is there's a lot of other stuff bad stuff that come from inhaling that tobacco it's not necessarily the nicotine itself although it is a highly addictive drug when inhaled yeah the point of these cigarettes at least one of the points is is that you can still get that nicotine right. without the tobacco It's separated from the tobacco, put in this other solution that you heat up without combustion and inhale, and then uh, birds just kind of chirp around your head, and you're suddenly dressed like Snow White, and you say, what was in that (laughs) e-juice? Or is it, and we'll talk about all this, this is, I'm just teasing ahead, but is it, is nicotine even bad for you if you're not burning it from tobacco? Is nicotine itself, Yes. because that one dude, uh, I think from the 70s, uh, in one of these articles you sent, said, you know, people people come for nicotine, but they die from tar. Yeah, Michael Russell. He was a South African scientist who basically was the guy who changed the way we viewed cigarettes. Like up to that point, it was a uh, psychological habit smoking was. And he right. said, no, actually, we're addicted to nicotine, um, and it's a, it's a physiological addiction. Yes. So that you've heard that like um and that came from there's this really great article, if not a little one sided, um, in Rolling Stone yeah. from two thousand thirteen by David Amsden. It's a tough one to say. Um but he talked about that guy, right? Mm-hmm. And that guy out of that whole thing, the the this big push to get people to quit smoking then focused on nicotine as an addictive drug right. and you had to smoke tobacco to get your addicted drug and the tobacco was going to kill you so just quit smoking altogether yeah apparently nicotine is not addictive unless you inhale it so whether you're inhaling it in water vapor or tobacco yes it is an addictive drug right so back to the device itself uh there are many many kinds you can get out there some of them um, are just sort of long and thin, like a like a ballpoint pen, and there is no button or device. Just simply inhaling it, mm-hmm. uh, putting your mouth on the tip and inhaling it will activate it. Right. Uh, other ones have little buttons on them that you push to activate uh, the system. 
that consists of three parts, which is that rechargeable battery. Right. Um, and when you think of a rechargeable lithium mm-hmm. battery, you think of a little tiny thing. That's the main body of these pens is right. the battery. Yeah. Then you have the little cartridge uh, or the vaporization chamber. No, no, sorry. Those are different things. Vaporization chamber is where uh, the party takes place. <laughs> And it and the cartridge is where the liquid is stored. Right. So the the vaporization chamber has the atomizer in it, and that's the thing that has the heating coils that heat up the the e juice. Yeah, the heating coils, which I just saw this today, they might be a problem as well. I saw that as well. And that's part of the Wild Wild West thing. They're testing like the juice, the juice, mm-hmm. the jus. Right. <laughs> To see if that's dangerous, but now it just said, uh, I just saw a study, um, published in Environmental Health Perspectives from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health that said that these coils are burning. These metal coils are producing like lead, chromium, uh, manganese, and or nickel. Right. So that's part of the device itself that is now being heated and mixed with the vape. Yeah, toxic metals. You don't want that stuff in your. No, that's the in stuff in cigarettes that people want to get rid of. Right. And part of the problem, I also saw another study that found that some of those toxic metals are in concentrations as high as cigarettes, if not higher. Yeah. Right. Um, Because it can vary, I think, depending on your device. Yes. And they found also in that same study that it seemed that the amounts were higher in um, frequently changed uh, atomizers. So oh, like, it's like I a want new... peaches and cream today, but uh, later today I want Oreo. Right, and if you're changing out your atomizer, the new head, a fresh head, seems to leach more toxic chemicals, oh, and then oh. it stops after a, a period of time. Gotcha. Not not the cartridge. No, not the cartridge. The atomizer yeah. with the coils, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, so you don't want that stuff. Part of the part of the reason you're inhaling nicotine is because it delivers it right to your brain, basically from your lungs. It's a really efficient delivery system. So you want to cut down on the additional stuff that's being delivered right to your brain, like lead, because you take a big, long pull off an e-cig. It's got a bunch of lead in it. There goes 10 IQ points. See you later. <laughs> uh, the cartridges, this, this liquid that's in there um, is nicotine, and the delivery system is usually uh, propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. Mm-hmm. Which... I mean, we'll get to all this. Yeah, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Yes, that is that is what it's made of. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's. All right, we'll be, we're going to go uh, puff some fat clouds and <laughs> be back right after this. So is that really what some people call it, fat clouds? I've seen people make fun of people by saying that. Okay. So I think it has been said. All right. Vapors, uh, they take a lot of grief from people. Well, they push push boundaries a lot. Yeah, but the whole culture is kind of like ripe for uh, ridicule? Sat- satirization and ridicule, sure. <laughs> I think, by people who don't do it. Yeah. Is that fair to say? It seems that way. Like there's got to be a Portlandia sketch about like sidewalk vapors, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing with the cartridges, though, is not all of them even have nicotine. Sometimes, and I don't get this at all. I don't get it either. But sometimes people just vape flavor. That is stupid. <laughs> that is a stupid thing to do. Because consider this. It's <laughs> bad enough if you're doing this to get nicotine, right? Right. You're a drug addict if you're doing this to get nicotine. So, yeah, you're probably going to get some toxic metals, and that may or may not mean a lot to you. It mm-hmm. may mean enough for you to quit. It may not mean anything to you, and you just keep on keeping on. Right. But if you're huffing toxic med- metals just to get a strawberry flavor, you're a dummy, and just <laughs> stop doing that immediately. Well, but it, what if that is what you do in place of this bad smoking habit you had? Well, then you should learn more about what you're inhaling because you're probably not – you're not smoking the nicotine because of you're worried what it's going to do to your health. Mm. 
So just stop altogether. Go get some dum dum lollipops, dum dum. Well, no, I mean that that's clearly, and there are some studies that uh, we'll get to later that pretty recent ones that have tested people who smoke and vape because that's sort of one of the problems is sometimes people do both. Yeah. Uh, because they want to get that nicotine hit, but they're at a party where you can't smoke or whatever. Right. Uh, That's like the worst case scenario with that you're doing both. Yeah, that you're using it to smoke more frequently. Right. Because you're smoking in (laughs) in places where you can't normally smoke tobacco. Right. So, uh, like I said, we'll get to that test, but they tested people who do both, people who do one and people who do none. And of course, doing nothing is the best case scenario. Yeah. And I want to go back a couple of steps. I don't mean to be all holier than thou. (laughs) I certainly don't think I'm any better than anybody who smokes just because I quit. With the benefit of hindsight, now that I don't smoke, yeah, uh, I, I, it's tough not to just be like, stop smoking. Yeah, you're gonna thank yourself. I, I know you. you want to. There are very few smokers out there who are dyed in the wool cigarette smokers who are like, man, I love smoking. Still, twenty years on, they probably want to quit, which is the sad thing. Yeah. So I'm sorry, everybody, if I came off as holier than that. <laughs> uh, it says in here, and I don't know how accurate this still is, but it says the cartridges last about as long as a pack of cigarettes. I don't know if that's still accurate because there are so many different kinds of tanks and cartridges you can get these days. I think it generally does, though, because they, really? they yeah, and they sell them at a certain price point, and I think it's comparable, depending on where you live, to a pack of cigarettes, like a a pack of New York twelve dollar cigarettes, I think. But that's if you buy the cartridges. Use them up and then buy another cartridge. Right. You can also buy a, a vaporizer that has a refillable cartridge yeah. that always stays on, and mm-hmm. you just refill it yourself because you're a thrifty person. Yeah, that, that'd be like, uh, mm. I guess, kind of like rolling your own cigarettes. It would be. You probably get a little more bang for your buck there, right? You definitely do, but you know. And you look cool. Do, do you? <laughs> no, I don't know. You look European. It's a pain, though. I I mean, I went through a cigarette rolling phase, but yeah, it's like, too. you want a cigarette right then? Man, i got to wait 45 seconds until I get this thing just right. No, I just ripped the paper. Now I have to start over. Just screw a cigarette. Yeah, when I was young and dumb. See, I wasn't a, a smoker smoker. Yeah. I would just smoke occasionally, which always bugs smokers. <laughs> um, and when I did my big Europe trip fresh out of college, I just thought it was the coolest thing to, you know. Roll up my drum cigarettes. Drum, okay. Walking around in Paris, you know. Yeah. Check me out, Frenchies. What a dum dum. Again. Did you have a beret on at least? Um, no, I smoked that too. <laughs> That's what you used to roll. <laughs> I had it on day one, but nice. I smoked it. Nice. Um, all right. So we might as well get into some of these um, health studies and concerns. Um, like we said over and over, one of the big problems is we don't know, uh, certainly don't know about long term health effects. No. It's too, it's too new. Uh, and are just learning about some of the short-term effects. Well, the thing is, is it, it, we it's too new to know about e-cigarettes specifically. But from these early tests that are coming back, mm-hmm. um, we know a lot about some of the chemicals that are showing up in these tests. And some of them are like, whoa, Nelly, you do not want that in your brain. Right. Um, there's one in particular. Some of these you can just tell from the names of them. They're just terrible. But um, acrylonitrile, I believe it's acrylonitrile. It is, uh, yeah, I think I nailed it even without even looking at it. It is a, uh, a very toxic poison that's used in the creation of um, acrylic fibers. I think maybe even some rubber. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a plastic. It's Sounds a like something plastic. you want to burn and inhale. Yeah. Well, the problem is is um, it is metabolizing your body into cyanide. So that's just one example of some of the stuff they're finding in the bloodstream of people who smoke e-cigarettes. And again, it's too soon to say what kind of effects these are having. But these chemicals have been documented for so many decades now that when they pop up, we can say basically automatically that's you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, yourself. and I think part of the big problem is the regulatory issues. Like it, it's finally under the FDA's wing, right? As of 2016, yeah. But they're still so new that they're not even making official statements yet, are they? Or are they? So here's the thing. This is this is a very bizarre thing, Chuck. They're um, they now regulate these things like tobacco, but it's not tobacco in the U.S. Yes. 
So if you have if you buy a, a vape pen or vapor cartridge or something like that, uh-huh. and it has nicotine in it, it's to the FDA. You're buying a pack of cigarettes. To an e-cig user, that would drive you crazy because right. you might be smoking e-cigarettes because you don't smoke tobacco because tobacco is something that's very, very, very bad for you. Right. Supposedly, e-cigarettes are a, a better alternative to that. To the FDA, they're the exact same thing. Right. And to an e-cigarette – I mean, I get their complaint because they can say, listen, you can buy nicotine patches and nicotine gum mm-hmm. and it doesn't have health warnings on there. Right. And that's all we're doing is ingesting nicotine. We're not burning tobacco, just like someone who chews nicotine gum isn't burning tobacco. Right. So why? It's it's because they look like cigarettes. Right. And you puff fat clouds. Yeah, and that's a that's a thing that David Amston says in this is that that's really the big distinction. Like if you're using it to quit smoking, it's the same thing as nicotine gum, and you can just go buy that over the counter, right? Yeah. Uh, with no warnings on the box at all. Um, but here, it there are warnings. It is treated like tobacco. And he says it's probably because e-cigarettes aren't designed as a, a medical device. Right. They're designed for enjoyment, too. They have, like, this right. dual use. And America has a long history of saying, oh, you enjoy this thing? <laughs> well, let's try and squash that. Right, exactly. Yeah, but what's, like, the big deal to them, though, really? I think, okay. If so it's he- regulated like tobacco, like, what? It's not keeping them from smoking. Oh, to e-cigarette users? Well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't prevent them from doing anything. What is it because you have to be 18 or something? I don't know. I think there seems to be a bit of a culture war going on with um, between e-cigarette users and manufacturers, too. And the anti-tobacco warriors mm-hmm. that were very successful, um, get this, from the 60s to today, there was a drop from, like, I think, 40% of Americans smoked in, like, 1965. 18% smoke as of, like, 2015 or 16. It's pretty amazing. It's a great drop. In numbers, it's actually not that big of a drop because the population kept growing. Sure. So it was really just an 8 million American drop. Mm-hmm. But it shows this social trend of people saying, we don't smoke anymore. Smoking is right. for losers, right? Yeah. So um, that was the that was the result of... Years, decades Mm -hmm. of government PSAs and the American Cancer Society and the American Heart Association and the Lung Association all getting together and just pumping, drumming it into the heads of Americans that smoking is stupid. It's a betrayal to your family. It's a waste of money. You're killing yourself. You're you're affecting like the insurance industry. You're you're crippling America with your stupid habit. And it worked. Now – if e-cigarettes are okay, they they have to walk that back some. And the people who are who are still trying to get America to be like totally smoke free are like we're not about to do that. But they don't though. That's that's that confusion between burning tobacco and ingesting nicotine like you would gum. Right. You know, because it's, it's a stigma because it looks like a cigarette. Partially, but also remember that. Um, Nicotine is most addictive when it's inhaled. When you chew it as a gum or get it through a patch, yeah. it's supposedly not addictive at all. Well. It's only when you inhale it that it's addictive. So they're also saying, like, this is a drug, and people are doing drugs, right. so it should be regulated. But then other people say, well, caffeine's a drug. Why right. don't we regulate that? Yeah. And Starbucks is like, shut your mouth. <laughs> should we take another break? Sure. All right. We'll come back and we'll talk about um, – that Rolling Stone article in a very interesting study from a few years ago, right after this. Right. So in that Rolling Stone magazine, there was a very um, big time study that came out of Britain in August 2015 uh, that they called a landmark review of e-cigs. And uh, they they said, quote, around 95 percent safer than smoking, which is that's a bold statement. It is. And I went and looked today to see how much that's changed. They have doubled and tripled down on that number. If you go on to the, the um, 
UK's government health service, the NHS site. Yeah. They say it's about 95% safer than smoking still. I saw a 97% somewhere. And this is like the Royal College of Surgeons saying this. So it's very much touted as a, an alternative tobacco to tobacco, a safer alternative to tobacco. So here's the deal, though. It seems like people in this article even that um, take issue with the 95% number say it may not be 95%, but it's, it is certainly better than burning tar into your lungs. Well, yeah. And those are the Americans, though. The Americans are saying, like, we're never going to say it's 95% safer. Yeah. But apparently most public health people in America say – it's almost certainly safer than than cigarettes. Like you said, just that combustion alone creates some really bad stuff that you're not going to get from vapor. Right. Just because there's no combustion. So right. just just by that alone would make e-cigarettes safer than than tobacco. But the question is is I think a lot of people have this idea that Oh, well, I can just totally like vape to my heart's content. Right. It's healthy even like it's like huffing vitamin C or something like that. <laughs> that doesn't seem to be the case from recent research. Yeah, and it says too here that um and this may be because of the the American propaganda machine but said uh, 84% of smokers believed e-cigs were safer in 2010 mm-hmm. and just 3 years later that dropped to 63%. Yeah, and there was another stat. I think I don't know if it was in that or another article, but they said that something like a third of former e-cig smokers said they went back to tobacco because they were worried about the oh, health really? dangers of e-cigarettes. <laughs> now that's a problem. Yeah, and there's a there's that's ridiculous. the people who are saying like, no, e-cigs are safer than tobacco, and what you're talking about at base are nicotine addicts. Right. So tout this. This nicotine delivery system over this nicotine delivery system, if it's even a little healthier. Right. You know? Uh, and, and America's saying, absolutely not. We're not doing that. In our eyes, they're one and the same tobacco and e-cigarettes. Hmm. So some people are saying, well, there's blood on your hands. The blood of 480,000 Americans who die from right. smoking every year. Yeah. From smoking tobacco. Right. That's the, that's the stakes to all this. Uh, but nicotine itself, and this is in that Rolling Stone article too, is super interesting. Did we do one on nicotine or just – I know we did quite a few on smoking. We did one on caffeine. Back in the day. Yeah. But nicotine is interesting in that it is uh, – apparently if it's not in – if it's not smoked and if you remove it from that cigarette, then it's fairly benign as a substance itself. Right. Although addictive mm. uh, as far as what it does to the body. But the weird thing is is that it – it doesn't do the same thing. Like it, it's sort of like this little magic, and that's why people smoke. Probably this little magic thing. If you're, if you need to feel up, and your body wants to feel up, a cigarette can make you feel up. Right. But if you want to chill out and relax, it can also do that. Right. So it has some pharmacological um, magic. Yeah, to it, <laughs> which makes it useful. But it's also, again, as that article is pointing out, it's been stigmatized ever since the '70s, and that change in paradigm of what smoking is yeah. came about and nicotine got targeted. So let's talk about some of these some of the things that have been found. Because one of the one of the big problems also, a, a big objection to just allowing <clears throat> um e cigarettes smoked anywhere, people vaping wherever they want, is that one, we don't know very much about it. Mm-hmm. But two, if we say Okay, maybe smoking's not so bad if you're not actually smoking, you're just vaping. Right. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Maybe it is on par with like drinking or, or coffee or whatever. Um, and teens start to take this up. And they are. They are. Um, the problem is, is a lot of people say, well, okay, we're turning our teens into nicotine addicts. I have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. But what if this whole vaping thing goes away and we've got all these teenage nicotine addicts? Do you really think they're not going to just start smoking cigarettes after that? Right, or just do that anyway. Right. Apparently, that's not necessarily happening. That teens who are – I feel like such an old guy saying the word (laughs) teens. Uh, Try try saying tweens. Tweens. I feel really old. Oh, that feels terrible. (laughs) Uh, That teens and tweens um, (laughs) – That when they are um, trying this, they're trying it. Most of them are deciding it's not for them, and they're not going on to tobacco, actually. 
Well, you're right, because they did a study, the CDC did one, that e-cig use had tripled in the past year among middle and high school students. Mm -hmm. But then you poke into the study, and it doesn't differentiate at all between someone who just tried it once, right, uh, waiting for the school bus, and a kid who really took it up. Right. So they're, it's so funny that after, or depressing that after all these years, there's still such bad studies. Well, bad reporting. Well, that too. On the studies. I, I saw that the CDC says that e-cigarette smoking is down 2015 to 2016. 16% of teenagers had smoked uh, or vaped in the last 30 days in 2015. It was down to 11.3% in 2016. And apparently tobacco, smoking tobacco is like holding steady at 8%. But mm. like 7% smoke cigars. Which really? is hilarious. <laughs> Remember that cartoon baby that was like a bank robber who smoked cigars? Oh, yeah, yeah. On the Bugs Bunny? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> on the Bugs Bunny? You know the tweens love that. I did see on some weird link researching all this that very sad kid, I think he was like Indonesian, that was oh, a, yeah. the two-year-old smoker. Oh, no, what happened? It was a, it was a follow-up. He doesn't smoke now. Oh, good. Um, but then he had a lot of weight gain, but it seems like now he's doing okay. <laughs> all right. But it was like I hated that people laughed and thought that was funny. Oh, it was disturbing. It was completely disturbing. Yeah, like a baby smoke, like a baby. Yeah, he could barely hold his head up, and he was smoking. I know. And, he and here we are laughing, but be, <laughs> not from that. <laughs> sure, it's laughing at how I said baby. Exactly. Um. So where are the chemicals coming from then? If they're not smoking tobacco, what's the problem? Well, I mean. It's, it's, some of it is is from the flavoring, right? The flavoring, yeah. Like seventy five percent of the this is a Harvard study. Seventy five percent of the flavored e cigs contain that. Uh, I think that's when you said diet di- <laughs> diacetyl. That was a different one. Oh, that's the popcorn flavor, right? Popcorn but, lung. Yeah, butter flavored, and that was. I mean, we don't. We're not saying it tastes like that, but it is a chemical used in artificial butter. And back in the early 2000s, that was when we heard the term popcorn, popcorn lung. <laughs> right. Well, actually, they do use it as a, a buttery flavor in, um, in, in whenever you have a buttery flavored e-cig or vape. Right. Right. So these, the, this, what did you call it? Diacetyl? Popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, diacetyl. Popcorn lung is, um, <laughs> it, it, like you said, it came from the early 2000s where people who worked in microwave popcorn corn plants. Yeah. We're coming down with this irreversible scarring of the lungs and a cough they couldn't kick. And it was from this molecule, from inhaling the molecule. Well, it turns out the amount of diacetyl that was that's found in even cigarettes, let alone e-cigarettes, is not nearly enough to give you popcorn lung. Right. But like you said, with the bad, bad reporting, that doesn't keep someone like our own beloved Mother Jones, even, yeah. from saying headlines like flavored e-cigs may be worse than nicotine. I saw also that some other uh, that fruity flavors in a recent study found that fruity flavors tended to um, be particularly toxic. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what the chemical was. And then cinnamon, vanilla, and buttery uh-huh. all had um, – all had bad reactions with white blood cells that they think might promote lung tissue damage in the long run. It just seems so gross to me. So, like, that's why if you're not smoking with nicotine Mm -hmm. and you're still inhaling all these chemicals for nothing, I I still – I'm going to double down. You're a dummy. Well, the FDA – and this is a big deal. um, In April – I think this was a couple of years ago – they released uh, these regulations, one of which said that in order to uh, get it passed through, each SKU is what it's called in the biz. Not just this business, but if you have a retail shop, like every little thing you sell is called a SKU. Right. Each SKU had to be approved. Mm-hmm. And that means every single flavor is a different SKU. And the dude did the math, and he was like, we have 240 SKUs, uh, $100 an hour. Five million per skew, and he's like billions of dollars basically to get all these stupid flavors approved. Right now that the, the now that the FDA has come in, right? Yeah. And what this guy was saying was, we have 
spent decades trying to get the tobacco companies, strip the power from them. Mm -hmm. And now that e-cigarettes are a thing and now they're being regulated, you just gutted out the independent businesses, which left big tobacco, this huge vacuum to come in and be like, okay, here are your e-cigarettes courtesy of us, big tobacco. Are they doing that already? They've been screwing you over for decades. Yeah. So they're making e-cigs now? Yeah, I believe Altria, who makes Marlboro, came out with the Mark 10 like almost immediately. Really? Once they hit the U.S. in like 2007 or 8. I'm surprised Big Tobacco hasn't gotten in on the cannabis thing. I can't believe they're not. Because cannabis vaping is a big thing now too. Yeah, well that guy in the Rolling Stone article was saying like a lot of his colleagues are being like, forget nicotine, I'm going over to cannabis, it's less regulated. Really? Basically, I'm yeah. paraphrasing here. That's funny, though. You got anything else? Uh, well, just that last study, we we never finally uh, said the results. This at UCSF's Division of Adolescent Medicine, uh, they tested 67 teens who vape compared to 16s who vape and smoke, mm-hmm. and 20 who did not do either. Mm-hmm. And of course, they found out that if you do both, it's a lot higher. If you vape. It's still high. If you mm-hmm. don't do anything, then you're fine. Right. It's kind of a no-duh study. Right. Apparently, also, some of the um, – w- depending on what chemicals, like formaldehyde can really come out of the flavorings or the um, vegetable glycerin um, or the propylene glycol, I think. Yeah. Or reactions between these things. But it's also very temperature-dependent. That at higher temperatures they can com- they can create some really toxic stuff, but at lower temperatures you can inhale the same stuff and the the um, those chemicals are not created. But if you're blowing fat clouds, mm-hmm. you're probably at a higher temperature. Is that what is that how they do that? Yeah. Okay. So you are uh, probably getting the worst of the worst chemicals that your cartridge has to offer. Yeah, I think a lot of those pens you, know, you can vary the temp. Mm-hmm depending on what you want to get out of it. Right. For Yeah, after like a certain price point, I would guess. Yeah. And then lastly, one other thing. That whole jazz about how you're just exhaling water vapor, that is almost certainly not the case. So you're exhaling some of those chemicals? Yep. Right into your cubicle neighbor's face. I mean, at the very least, like, it's not like, oh, we should be able to do this in movie theaters and restaurants because mm-hmm. it's not smoke. Right. It's still obnoxious. Sure. And you look like a dope. Yeah, with that <laughs> flannel tied around your waist. Boy, we're going to hear from vapors. They're going to be mad. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know more about vaping, read about this. Don't go take it up. That was another problem that people were saying is like they're, if it's touted as like harmless or whatever, mm-hmm. people might be like, well, I was putting off smoking because I didn't want to die, but maybe I'll try this vaping thing. Right. Don't do that. Just go read about it, figure out what you think about it, and then... Don't vape or smoke, says I. And in the meantime, it's time for listening now. I'm going to call this uh, Sea Monkey Follow Up. Oh, yeah, good. We love that episode. That was a great one. Uh, hey, guys, just listen to Sea Monkeys. As a young reporter with a local newspaper, I interviewed Yolanda at her home in uh, Brian's Road, Maryland. That was the widow of the inventor of Sea Monkeys. Right. Uh, she wrote a children's book, and I was doing a story about it. It was about animals, by the way, not sea monkeys. I remember her giving me a giant bottle of Evian water and the best vegan pumpkin chocolate chip cookies ever. That sounds good. She was a devoted animal lover and one of those people who would feed wildlife and deer that wandered onto her property, uh, leading them to overrun the surrounding neighborhood. (laughs) She also filled me in on the sea monkey saga and gave me a T-shirt and other sea monkey merchandise. I gave the sea monkeys and tank to my friend who kept them alive on our office desk for years. Nice. Uh, there are always rumors about uh, von Braunhut having a Nazi flag displayed uh, on their house, but he was long dead by the time I met Yolanda. The house was shabby, but the rooms I had I saw had a comfortable vibe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shabby comfy. <laughs> and she was very kind to me, and you couldn't help but feel sorry for her. I love the podcast. Sarah. Thanks a lot, Sarah. That's pretty good. I love follow-ups like that, Uh where it's like, hey, this thing you talked about, here's an extra little peek that you didn't know. That's right. Peek. Well, if you want to give us a peek, you can tweet to us. I'm at Josh M. Clark and at SYSK Podcast. I also have a website called com. 
Uh, you can get to Chuck on Facebook at facebook.com slash Charles W. Chuck Bryant. There's also a slash Stuff You Should Know Facebook page. You can send all of us, including Jerry, an email to stuffpodcast at howstuffworks.com. And as always, join us at our home on the web, stuffyoushouldknow.com. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit howstuffworks.com. 